How to Quit Your Job, The Science of Financial Independence. I'll start tonight's presentation with this. You won't master your life without transcending your boss. Why? It's because when you have a boss and you need to have said boss, they tell you how much you're worth, they tell you what to do, they tell you when to do it, and they tell you where to do it. And they'll do that for the majority of the waking hours in a day, for the majority of the days of a week, for the majority of the weeks of the year, for the majority of the years of your life. And so if you've done my inspired life process or if you've done a school of mastery time study and you've actually gone through your week, you'll see that it's the most thing that you do in your waking hours. And so until you transcend that, you're not really going to be living your life is because they're going to be the authors of your life. They're literally authoring your life. So if you go to the bookstore and you look at all the biographies of the people who have written books, you don't often get a person's biography who's worked for a boss their whole life. It's because they're not the main character of their own life. And I'm being a little facetious, but there's a, there's a truth to it. I think you guys, if you're here on this call, you kind of intuitively understand that. You won't master your life without transcending your boss. Now, that's not to say that you, that you can't have a boss. Because you can, like the millionaire in South Africa who was driving Ubers, he was financially independent and, and took a job working for Uber and doing, we bought his book in the back of an Uber and he was already a millionaire. He just wanted the, the companionship and wanted to meet people and wanted to be able to network and that's, you know, but as I've said to you guys many times, it's a very big difference between I have to go to work and I now choose to go to work because I just would love to do this particular thing. And I'm sure that there's certain jobs that you could do that you really just love to do the thing. Still tonight applies because you still want to become financially independent from said boss and just show up because you like doing the thing. You guys know the distinction. So a couple of weeks ago on the weekly huddle, you guys mentioned that you might like a tool to let you know when to quit your job. Well, tonight we're doing the tool. I made the tool Well, I've polished the tool up and we're going to go through it tonight. So some background before we get to the tool is you need to know a couple of things. And here's what you need to know. Firstly, to quit your job, you need to answer two questions. One, when can you afford to quit the job? And two, how will you make the money? If you can answer those two questions, you're pretty well home and hose. And so let's answer them right now. First question. When can you afford to quit? This is a science, by the way. And there's a couple of rules to answer the question. Rule one, firstly, when you know, you know. There's going to be certain cases with you guys. You're going to launch your product. It's going to go gangbustersbananas.com and you're, and you're going to be making so much fucking money, you'll know. And so when you know, you know. You just quit. We had a case where someone in our circle um, started the little spicy, spicy, if you know what I'm talking about. Eh? One week, she quit her job. One fucking week. So, so when you know, you know, is because when the money's flowing, you know. But that's the easy people. They're probably, you're probably not on the huddles because you're not there. There's a whole a group of people who don't quite know. And you're kind of doing something, who knows this? And you're kind of selling something, launching something. There's some income coming in, but you've got the expenses and the job secure. And it's like, when do I quit? I don't really, it's not like a black and white. It's not a whitewash, you know what I'm saying? And so... To that end, follow the principles that we're about to uncover tonight because this will tell you when. Runway. Here's what we need to understand. Runway. Who's heard of runway when you're, in the, when you're doing a startup in the startup world and you have a burn rate and you get investor capital? Who's seen these guys? And they, they get investor capital coming in and they have a certain amount of cash in the bank and they have a certain burn rate. And, and when you put it into a timeline, the runway is how long they have. It's sometimes called the cash runway. The same thing applies when we're talking about when to quit our job. And so the runway is the number of months until your cash runs out and you need to know. Who's ever seen this formula in the school of mastery, the prosperity formula? I'm going to start with this really quickly, a little bit of a refresh. The prosperity is A over E minus PI, where A is your liquid assets, E is your expenses, and PI is your passive income. And who remembers what prosperity is? It's a time-based figure. And so when you crunch these numbers, what the prosperity formula tells you is how many months you can buy into the future. It's a time figure. People who live week to week will have a one-week prosperity. People who live month to month will have a one-month prosperity so on and so forth. And the whole idea with prosperity or financial independence is to get that number as far out into the future to the point where you have more money at the end of your life than life at the end of your money, which is what most people, the situation most people are in. So this is a time formula. It spits out a time. Okay. I've been teaching this for a decade. You've seen it here. You've seen it here. Who remembers the old flip chart videos? Mm -hmm. 
Okay? I've been teaching the prosperity formula for a while. Check this formula, drill it into your memory, and now have a little look at this. Because guess what now? The runway formula is the same formula. It's the same bloody thing. Where runway is time. Runway is the number of months until your cash runs out. And you need to know that to figure out when you can quit your job. S is savings. E is the same, expenses, and I is income. But this time, when we're talking in the context of can I quit my job yet, specifically what I is, is the income from the new source after tax. So if you have a job over here, boom, great. Then you go home and you might call it the side hustle temporarily, good, great. And you're starting to make income from the side hustle, from the business, from the 4PE, from your lean green profit machine, from your e-com store. In Andy's case, from selling mushrooms. He's got the mushroom biz. I just saw some of Andy's videos. They're really, they're really awesome. Good. Income from the new source. That's the formula. And so uh, drawn out properly, runway is savings divided by expenses minus income. This is just the startup cash burn formula, but you need to know it. I'm going to show you how we're going to use it. Okay. So firstly, if you have $10,000 in cash savings in the bank right now, and you have a lifestyle expenses, that's a $4,000 per month. And let's say that you've got the no income. You have not launched your 4PE yet. Okay, well, you've got a 2.5 month runway. Why? Is because if you lost the job, you cut into the savings at the rate of $4,000 per month. And so you can buy yourself 2.5 months into the future. That's your runway. Or if we're doing this formula for, for, for financial independence, we call it prosperity, the time figure. Now, the only thing I've changed in the second line is now that your income is 2000 because maybe you've launched something and you've getting, you're getting some momentum, fantastic. Now, your income, which remember I said, only we're only counting income from the side hustle, from the business. We're not including your job income because that's going to fall to zero when you quit the job. We're only counting business income, good. Let's say that we're up to now $2,000 a month, good. Expenses are still four. That means that the business can support half of your living costs, and which means that your runway doubles. You just doubled your runway. Okay, good. You're seeing how this goes on. Now, if you keep getting more and more income in the business, which is what you want to do, and you almost get to the point, $3,999, almost get to the point where you can... Um, pay for all your expenses, well, then your runway goes out to 10,000 months. And so what you get in this formula is this thing where when the denominator approximates zero, the runway approximates infinity or an unlimited runway. And that's ultimately what we want to get. You want to get make sure that the business is getting, the business wants to pay for your bloody expenses and then you can quit your job. And that's called an unlimited runway. The reason I'm sharing this, and this is important, is because many, many, many of you cheeky devils are going to quit the job before you get to an unlimited runway. And the question is, how far, how far before? And that's really, it's an important thing is because if you wait until you get unlimited, it could take fucking years. You need a way to, to draw a line in the sand is when my runway gets to this figure, boom, I'm out. And because the moment you quit the job, you just freed up 40 hours, 45, 50, when you add in, add in the commute and all the dick around, horse around factor. I'm saying that you, could, you guys can quit the job before you get to an unlimited runway, keeping in mind that when you quit, you're just going to add so much resources in terms of time, energy, focus, attention to grow the income further to get it up to an unlimited runway. Whereas if you're trying to get it all the way to an unlimited runway while you're still in the job, that can be challenging, particularly if you work a lot of hours, makes sense. So that leads us therefore to rule two. The bare minimum runway, six months. And the ideal runway, 12 months. That's the official school of mastery statement. Understand this. Quitting your job with a zero to six month runway, you're crazy. You're going to be stressed as fuck. And, and you're going to put so much pressure on yourself. And it often doesn't work. Now, if you're an individual who thrives under pressure, which most people aren't, I've, I seem to find, Okay, maybe you, 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 it's the old thing where you jump off the cliff and build your wings on the way down. Okay, but still, less than a six-month runway is so short. It's not enough. Six to 12 is when I'm sort of suggesting to my guys, okay, now you can have a little bit of a look. It's an aggressive play still to quit your job when you've only got six to 12-month runway. It's aggressive, but it's, it can be done. And then 12-month, you're probably ready. And then unlimited is like, you're already home and hose. You're free. Like you're already making 
more money in the business that, that what your expenses are after tax. So go for gold. You know what I mean? Good. Rule three, use your six month weighted average income. Important, important, important is because I get a lot of messages and say something along these lines. Not exactly, but in the ballpark of, hey, Lewis, I just made the $4,000 after tax profit in my business last month. My expenses are $4,000 a month. Therefore, I'm ready. I'm going to quit the job a doodle do. And then I say something along the lines of, not so fast, my friend. So I'm going to draw this picture out. Let's say that you're someone, you got the 10000 in the bank. Good. And you're the $4,000 a month expenses at the moment. Good. And if you could have that 4000 a month after tax, you'd be, you'd be cheering. Okay. Now, because it's August right now at the time I'm doing this video, that's this month. Let's say that you did $4,000 in August. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So then I'll say, it's like, okay, cool. What'd you make last month? Zero dollars. Because I just started the fucking thing. And it's like, oh, how much did you make in the month before? Zero, 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 zero. If this is what you've done, you understand, you haven't proven yourself over a long enough period of time to go and start quitting your job. And it's, it's, that would be crazy. You know what I mean? But, but then you say, well, the runway formula. Oh, I could do the runway 10,000 divided by, and you, you do your four minus four, and you'd get an unlimited runway. It's like, what are you talking about, Lewis? Here's what I'm talking about. Your income's not really $4,000 a month. You made $4,000 one month. That doesn't mean you make $4,000 per month. Makes sense. Big fucking thing. Particularly, look, particularly in trading, this was, this was, very problematic is because people have one fucking week, good week trading, and they think they, they extrapolate that out and they multiply it by 52. It's like, this is how much money I make a year now. And it's like, no, it's not. You know, I mean, trading in particular, it's very volatile. But regardless, any business has volatilities. Who has a business who has ups, high months, low months? And so the question is, and the good question is, is what bloody figure do you use in the runway formula if you don't just use last month's? Here's what I want you guys to do. I want you to use a weighted six month average. And so if this month you did the 4,000, if I asked you, what did you make last month? It was 3,000. Okay, we're on the up, good. And then the month before, maybe you made 2,000. Okay, good. And then you started in June, so it was zero, zero, zero. And the question is, is what income figure do you plug into the formula to work out the runway? Good question. Here's what I suggest. You do a weighting. And here's the weighting. It's where you put more emphasis on the recent months and less emphasis on the five and six months ago. Because also it's this idea of like, well, five months ago I had a good month and six months ago I had a decent month. And I've done dick all since then. It's like you don't want to, you can't quit your job on that. It's because that was so far long ago. And whatever you did to make that, you're not doing now for whatever reason. Or you've, or you've drained your, your, your funnels, you've drained the pipes. So you want to weight it so that the most recent numbers are more heavily calculated. Now, I got a tool for you guys, so you don't have to dick around with this. I'm just letting you know what, what's going on behind the scenes. But when you plug this in, the number is $2,308 a month. So if you've done 4,000 this month, you did 3,000 last month and 2,000 the month before, and then zero, your six-month weighted average income is $2,308 a month. Good. And that's the number you use in the runway formula. It's because you need, to, you need to have some degree of stability and some sort of evidence that you can sustain this shit for a little bit. When you go to quit your job, it's like you, you don't want to just do it on the, what you've made last week. It's common, common. We see that. Very short time horizon. We're going to extrapolate that out as, and call it like a run rate. This is my own. Oh, I'm, I'm making like a $6 million a year run rate. And it's really not that at all. Be grounded, be grounded. So that's how you do the calculation. And, and in this case, it would end up being a 5.9 month runway. Now, if this individual started September tomorrow and did another $4,000 in September, or maybe even more, maybe they're continuing their growth cycle, fantastic. And that weighted average income in yellow will reflect that and it will keep bumping up. So if you can do 4,000 a month for six months straight, then you'll, even your weighted average income will be 4,000. Next, rule four, it might not work the first time and that's okay. We know many, many people. Well, look, back in IP, our whole thing was quit your job. And, and we did, I think by the time we ended IP, it was close to 300, in the 200s, I think, at least who have reported they quit their jobs. We had one guy today who's quitting tomorrow, Dan Holden on my 
story. Oh, okay. That's exciting. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, so they're still coming in. They're still coming in. But we've also seen many, many people quit and then for whatever reason it doesn't work out or the income dries up and they have to go back to work. And guess what? That's okay. Who gives a fuck? You go back to work, you build up the runway again, go again and go again. It's like, maybe I'll just draw it out like this. It's like, this is your life and here's zero years old on the left and, and here's 90 years old on the right. And by the way, this is to scale. The bar is 1,500 pixels wide and it is to scale. No joke. I wouldn't expect any less. No <laughs> joke. Okay, so here's what, the, you know, here's what the majority of people do at the age of 20. They go and get the uh, study hard, get good grades and get a degree and then they get the job and then they meet a girl or a boy and they get the big diamond ring, they get the big old wedding and they get the big old honeymoon and they thought, holy shit, couldn't afford that. Now we've got the credit card debt with the interest. And then what they do is on the honeymoon, they get the missus pregnant, boom, baby up the oven. We're doing the baby and to have the baby and to raise the baby, you need the big mortgage, the mortgage, the pledge till death. And you get the home and the white picket fence with your six and 7% interest rates, whoopsie daisies. And then because you got the baby and the two babies, maybe then you need the car to fit the baby and all the thing. And then by 40, 12 years is the median divorce period here in Australia. Anyway, I saw that Portugal has a 94% divorce rate. It was a fucking wild, but global average around about 50%. In Australia, we have a 12-year median divorce. So you're married by 28, you're looking at your divorce by 40. So by 40, you want to kill yourself. You had the midlife crisis. You got the divorce. You split your wealth in half. Whoopsie daisies. And then you got to figure out oh, mid-40s, midlife crisis. Got to get my shit together. Might start investing now. I'm being a little facetious, but as you can tell, but, but what I am saying for, for real is the earlier you do this, the easier it is. If you can... Quit your job, build up a little runway, six to 12 months and quit. And the earlier you do that, if you guys are doing it, we, I mean, we, we know some fuckers who did it in their teens when they're still, you know, mm -hmm. teens, early 20s, fantastic. If you're living at home, fantastic. It's, the, it's so easy. It's That's easy. what you did. That's what I did. I, said, <laughs> I wasn't moving. I said to my mom, I'm not moving out until I'm a millionaire. <laughs> and I did it. I moved out a little bit earlier, but, but it was close. But the longer time goes on and the more stuff you accumulate, the more wealth halves you've had through a divorce, the more kids you've got to run, the more you've lived a hard battle of life and you're in that stuff, the harder it is. It's harder it is. So, so sooner the better is really what the message is. So, so if you guys build up a little runway, six, 12 months, and then you quit your job to do your thing, fantastic, and you do it in your late 20s, let's say, fantastic. This is what it looks like. This green bar, again, to scale, is one year. But here's the thing when you do it, it's like, you know, before a year, if you need to maybe start fishing around some employment, maybe get, get another job. And so I'm going to reduce that bar. The bar just reduced by half if you were to paying attention. That bar now is a six month bar to scale. That's what six months look like, looks like on the, on the timeline of your life. It's nothing. So do it, you know, and in six months, you'll know. And, and the, the rule here is like, if it doesn't work, that's okay. And then if it doesn't work, go back, get another job, get your employment. And then do it again. Have a little break for a year and do it again. Build up the runway, go again. And then if that doesn't work, go again. And if that doesn't work, go again. And maybe you have, have, you know, have some kids or something, have a little break here. Go again at 40 and then go again and then go again. I mean, if it's not working by then, you've probably failed some of the rules here at the School of Mastery, but and you probably should take the season two from the top again. But what I am saying is who gives a fuck if it doesn't work? You're doing, you're doing lean businesses. You're not doing debt. You're keeping DTI down. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing to lose except pride. There's nothing to lose except, oh, what will people say? That's all it is. I, have no, I don't think there's any shame in, in doing it. We, we, some of our friends have done it. Quit, yep. didn't work. Didn't, the first time didn't stick. Mm -hmm. Back to work. Boom, boom, boom. Second time's a charm. Third time, you know? Yep. Great. Go again. If you're Colonel Sanders, if the KFC man, he was old by the time he got the fucking Kentucky Fried together. Mm -hmm. Right? They didn't like the Kentucky Fried, mm -hmm. the people. But he goes, oh, you go again. So, but every time you go again, you ask the question, what worked, what didn't work? Boom, go again. Makes sense. I really don't think there's much to lose when, when you're doing this and, and know that the, the well, maybe I'll say it like this. The reward risk ratio on trying is great. It's worth, worth doing it particularly early as possible. Anyone here still living at home, I wish that was, you guys got the dream situation living with the parents. That's the dream. 
when you move, it gets harder as years go on and the more dependence and more bullshit going on, you know? It gets harder. So let's go. Rule five, there's only three ways to lengthen the runway. And we're going to cover these in the tool very shortly. One, you push back your quit date. Two, you reduce your expenses. Three, you make more money. It's the only ways you're going to increase the runway. So when you push the quit date back, it's like, I can't quit today. But if I'm on this rate, could I quit in three months from now? Could I quit in six months from now? And who would agree knowing when you can quit would be valuable to know? So imagine if you had a little tool that you could pump your bing bongs in, your numberinos, and it would say, well, now your run rate is five months. You couldn't really do it smartly. But if you keep saving this figure and, and you keep growing your income by 10% per year, for example, then in three months from now and in six months from now, you could. You could quit. And that gives you a little bit of a foresight, gives you a bit of a planning so that you know, well, here I'm going to do it. Maybe you round it off. It's like, I'm going to quit on my birthday. I'm going to quit on the, at the end of the year for the new year. In my case, when I quit, it was at the end of my apprenticeship. And so I, I, I could have quit a little bit earlier, really, but, but I wanted to see my apprenticeship out. I put four years into the thing. May as well see a few more months out, you know. Reduce your expenses and then put it into savings to increase your savings and then uh, make the more money. That's always the thing. Make more money. Okay, tool time, Robbie. Beautiful. Here we go. So 12 years, eh? Divorce average. We got one year to go. Median. Yeah. Mm. If we're the median, <laughs> we get, we're good for one more year, Robbie, then I'm out of here. Right? <laughs> Go into the, um, what do they call it? The Contiki Tours. Yeah, pick up all the backpackers. The freshy fresh. The freshy fresh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay. The quit job calculator. Who's got it? We're good. Okay. So as per usual, you hit the file, you hit the make a copy, and you have the make a copy. You have a copy. But for the sake of this video, you might watch me use it, and I'll show you what to do. You fill in the white cells. Um, that's all you do. Now, Robin's got this little thin dick keyboard. Tell you what. <laughs> hey, I don't know how you type on this thing. Where's my fingers? Here we go. What's the date today? 30th of August. What the fuck? I tell you what, Robbie, I don't like your laptop. 30th of August, 2023. You pump it in. And did you just see that? Down here, it says August 23, July, June, May, April, March. It's gone back six months. You guys see that? You guys know why that's happened. If I had typed September, it'd go six months back from September. Total savings. Let's say that you got the $10,000 savings, cash savings. Let's say that your monthly expenses are $4,000. That's around about, around about reasonable. Now what you're going to pump into this thing, well, firstly, you can see that your current runway in months is 2.5. That was the numbers that I used in the example before. When you've got the 10,000 savings and when you've got the, the monthly expenses of four, you're good for two and a half months if you quit your job. But what we haven't factored in is your income on the business. And so how much are you making in the business? Maybe you did have the $4,000 month in August. And maybe you did have the $3,000 profit after tax month last month in July. And maybe in June it was $2,000. And maybe in May, April, and March it was zero. And remember what I said before, the weighted average income, which is the weighted average over the last six months, was $2,308. I've pretty much just used the same numbers in the example before. That's the income. So you're not going to go by 4,000 or 3,000 or I just, well, I think if I can do 4,000 a month, I can do it every month. You're going to be conservative and you're going to use that as the figure that you use for the math. And so current runway is 5.9 months. It's just under the six. So let's just say hypothetically, you plug your digis in and you get something that's one, two, three, four, five months. It's not quite enough. The question then is, how do I lengthen the runway? And I said before that there's only three ways to do it. Okay, one, you make more money. And so this annual income growth is a percentage figure that you can type in. And so, and it's, and it's taking the $2,300 a month and it's saying in a year from now, how do you, how do you project that 2,300 will be? Do you reckon you could uh, do a 50% growth? Or in other words, it has a little message off to the side here. That means in one year from now, you'll be doing $3,400 per month. That's what a 50% growth would look like. Now you think, well, $3,400 a month. Well, I did $4,000 last month and $3,000 a month before. So you kind of have a feel, depending on your business, depending on how sustainable it is, you kind of have a feel. I reckon I could do that in a year from now. That would be a 50% growth based on the weighted average. 
And so make more money is always the first thing. Next, what you can do is you can push the quit date back. So now instead of uh, having a um, quit date, you can use this little drop down you see. And so now you can just play with a little quit date. Okay, August 23 is now, but okay, what if I do three months from now? Okay, and then because I'm not going to quit my job for another three months, what if I'm already having some employment now where I'm saving and investing and I'm making a decent income and I can save more money while I've got that employment? And what if I could save $1,500 a month, monthly savings until quit date? Well, what's going to happen is I've got another three months of saving, okay? This is what happens. Currently, the runway is 5.9. But if I quit in three months from now, which would be November 2023, the second row here says your runway by November 2023 will be unlimited. That's a good thing. So if we be more conservative, okay, 30%, okay. You can, and so you can play with the numbers and you can see how things interact with each other. And so if you weren't going to have any growth, if you could see that there's no way that I'm going to be making more than $2,300 a month and you, you, know, you would not be, uh, you'd not be, you're not cooking with gas. Your runway is too small here. And even by November, your eight month runway, I mean, you could do it, but you'll blow up by July, 2024. And so the question is, is would you still take that, take that bet? Would you still try and quit in three months knowing that it, at that time you'll have an eight month runway? Maybe, but it's yellow, meaning it's aggressive. 6 and 12. So, okay, so we could push the um, quit date back six months. And as you can see, it keeps getting longer and longer and longer. And the runway is getting longer and longer and longer. So you have a pretty good feel. February, if these were your numbers, February, you could have a crack at maybe, maybe March, maybe March 2024. Bingo. And now it goes green. And this is um, the chart, obviously, is, is, what, is what your um, account's going to look like. Now, just be aware that you're going to quit in seven months from now, which will be March 2024. You tell the world, hey, I'm quitting my job March 2024. As long as you're banking $1,500 a month into your savings, because that needs to be going up for seven months straight. And then, but your runway by March 2024 will be 12 months. And you could have definitely, like I said before, on the timeline of your life, give it a crack. Know that with the current numbers, you will blow up by March 2025 right here. So that's not good. So you do it with the intention of, by way of me quitting my job, I'm going to have 40, 50 hours more every week to put into high profit actions that will give me a high probability of, of quitting and not blowing up is really, is really the thing. But even if we put like a 20%, you can start to see the, the curve, it will curve. And so this chart, by the way, if you've ever looked up the, um, the runway charts, it look cash runway, it looks a little bit like these, these charts. The other thing that you can do, which I'll mention just really quickly before we go back to the keynote, is this. Monthly expenses, 4,000. If you can get that down to 3,500, that makes a big difference. If you can get the expenses down and the savings up, that helps. And so play with these numbers and you will be able to see. Make sense? And the way that you get your expenses down is this tool here. Robbie, send them the link in case you haven't got it. It's called the monthly expense optimizer. We won't go through it tonight just because I have many, many times before. But go through the monthly expense. Look, if you're in a situation where you have a chance now and you're young and fresh and vibrant and sexy and you got the vigor and you want to can have a shot at quitting your job, do it sooner than later. And if that means temporarily really cutting down and tightening up your expenses, temporarily, do it. And one way that you can do it is reduce your lifestyle, obviously, temporarily. Second way that you can do it is um, go through this tool and go through every single row and read all the instructions and go into every single area of life and see where you can trim up expenses. And so usually between 10 to 30% people can reduce their expenses, monthly expenses by from doing this tool. Back to the bookie wookie. I said before that to quit your job, you need to answer two questions. One, when can you afford to quit? That's a science. It's a math. There's a tool to it. There's a calculation for it. There's a formula to it. I just gave you that. Would you agree? With that tool and that understanding, that's when you can quit your job. When the runway is at least six months, ideally 12 months, but between six and 12, it's aggressive. But if you're optimistic about the business that you're doing, and particularly if you know that if you had another 40, 50 hours a week or whatever hours more a week that it's going to be, that you could grow it, okay, worthy of giving it a crack, worthy of, worthy of giving it a crack, that's when you can afford to quit. The second question is, how will you make the money? 